Meghan Markle here. Today is March 3rd, 2024. It is 1.19 a.m. Um, today I plan on doing at least two videos. This one, there's some stuff regarding politics from Byline, Rishi Sunak, Ravik, and some other things. Oh, these was, I pick one out of many regarding uh, Kate and HuffPost was talking about how they should stop... Uh, talking about Kate and all of that. So regarding the Kate situation, I'm going to try my best, okay? From what I've seen, I'm going to try my best not to talk about it. But check, if you usually check my community board, I usually post a screenshot of discussion that's going on on Twitter. So check my community board on that. But I'll try my best not to bring them on some of my videos. And the second video, I plan on doing it for Pure YTE. This, I should have done it yesterday, but um, the video that I did yesterday took a long time for me to um, record and edit, and I didn't even know if I was going to read the, the judgment of the review, Heavy Security. It was not not a lawsuit. It was a review. Heavy wanted a judge to review it. So the finding of the judge, I then... Um, I didn't want to read the entire thing, but I read a good portion of it. All right, so I didn't get a chance to do this video. So tonight I plan on doing that. Hopefully these don't take too much of my time. All right, so let's look at the background of this channel. For record purposes, feel free to skip. You don't have to watch it. All right, there's this here, 3,817 subscribers. Let's go on Twitter. I believe this is the first one. I saw it and I just put it on there. Because this one, I did not put it on my community board. But uh, my community board have a whole bunch of other tweets and retweets regarding this. Okay. How did someone go from writing this app ad in 2020 to writing that half post plea for Kitty who participated in the abuse of Megan? Did she unknowingly sell her name to be used for that article? Or has she sold her conscience to her head? Hmm. <laughs> I just don't get it. Okay. So let's see here. June 19. The strong black woman stereotype is dangerous. This op-ed argues that when it comes time to help black girls and women in need, there are no national calls for justice. Huh. This op-ed is written by a member of the Teen Vogue 2020 Youth Voter Committee. Read more about the project and the author here. Mm -mm -mm. These dangerous tropes mean life or death for black women, institutional racial bias that claim black people are not as sensitive to pain as white people subsequently influence the fact that black women have the highest maternal mort mort mortality rates, dying 2.5 times more than white women in 2018. Ujima Inc., the National Center on Violence Against Women and Black Community, reports that one in four black girls will be sexually assaulted before the age of 18. For every black woman who report being assaulted, though, 15 do not. Lest we forget the countless abducted and or missing black girls, the alarming rates of black trans women who are killed yearly due to transphobic hate crimes and the black women victim of police violence. <laughs> So I thought it was a comparison. So where is the other one? In the middle of my recording, I completely forgot. She was making reference to half post tweet. This is the one here, which she did not retweet. She only made reference to it. 
Okay, that's why I was asking myself question, where is the comparison? And I completely forgot she was making reference to this. The Kate Middleton conspiracy theories need to stop. Okay, I'm just going by this. I'm not going to click on the article. Okay, so I forgot to uh, mention this part and she did not retweet it. She just made reference to the HuffPost article, but, um, uh, you know, she did not uh, compare so we could see that she could have take screenshot i guess she was trying to avoid from not uh, clicking on it so this is what she was making reference to and i told you guys i have a lot of screenshots of some other people who retweeted it and uh with their comments okay the kate Middleton conspiracy theories need to stop and then the tweet that i shared is making reference to where is it <laughs> i'm in the middle of editing i just realized that okay so there it is here okay woman stereotype is dangerous so the person who was sharing this tweet was saying is that the same person okay this is what you wrote a while back and now you're saying for the conspiracy theories for kate Mendes and this to stop so where were you when they were dragging megan left and right for almost seven years if not already seven years or more okay so this is that this is she's making reference to this all right that's it. Let's get back to the original recording. Uh, they don't see Megan as human being worthy of respect and dignity, likely both. The Sheikh was right. <laughs> um, I'm embarrassed for her at this point. Amazing. So now I want to share. Bec I was not going to do that. I thought this one was going to show a comparison. Wow. Hmm. You know what? Let me leave that alone. Let me leave that alone. Oh, what is that? This was not on my list. Prince Osh, okay, let's leave that. This will be another one. All right, let me focus on my list. Okay, next tweet. I add this on my next video that will be on PYTE. Okay, next tweet. Okay, so it's very interesting. This one, I saw it since yesterday. Quote, Harry needs to bring the king's grandchildren to see him. They also need to see their cousins. What is he not getting? The king put in place restriction so that he will see less of his own son and grandchildren this is the same guy who was crying the moment harry left saying that the queen needs him everybody needs him catherine needs him all sort of things four times i asked the palace or maybe three times i asked the palace if we as a, as a media group could meet megan and it never happened and i think if she, if we had have met her and if she'd have met us <clears throat> things might have been different you know you might see that we're human and she's human unfortunately she did get some bad press uh and that's that's that was a mistake but um you know we want we asked for forgiveness and uh and please come back because um you know this is a great country and the royal family are very important to us all and the queen needs your support harry because you know william can't do it all catherine can't do it all the prince of wales is taken on the queen's role now so he's even more busy so, you know, Harry is badly needed here. But, you know, this, what he's asking here, it goes both ways. You know, they could fly over here to come and see him, right? Okay. There's some comments here. Will someone tell that dirty old pervert author idiot to stop crying and demanding that Diana's second son apologize to his bullying brother and wicked witch stepmother, Botox face sister-in-law, and no author, her third grandson, they need to be at that core. Okay, so let's see here. Let's go in there. Oh, there's more. I didn't know it was that. What the hell? Oh my. I didn't know it was uh, three videos. Okay, so let. Oh, the, what in the name? What? I didn't know it was that long. Okay. Okay, so let's start from the top. I didn't know it was that long. Was it Volk out on about Royal Sussex store? March 1st. Okay, I'm not sure what this hashtag means. Vulcan out on about Royal Sussex store. When they went, they were in Tonga. Harry was angry with the press and he was ordered to go say thank you to the Wodovats. But according to law, wasn't nice to them. Val, I guess Valentine Law. Uh, Valentine Law has uh, seen WhatsApp text where Harry was ordered to meet them. Okay, all right, so this is brand new to me. I was not expecting all of this. 
very memorable tour, not least because it started with the announcement of Meghan's pregnancy. And there were all sorts of memorable things about that. Uh, so I remember she visited some people in Australia and she brought them banana bread, which she baked yes. herself, which was definitely a royal first. Mm. When we got to Fiji, there was this long and, if I dare say, rather tedious welcome ceremony. It rained, Val. It rained. It, it was always raining. Where Harry and Meghan sat on thrones on some stage. Well, this hour-long ceremony took place. And then a day or two later, we went to a different part of Fiji and there was another welcome ceremony, which was even more boring. Harry was just glowering at the press. We were slightly to one side of the stage. He was not happy that day. And he just looked daggers at us for the entire thing. He what did you do? An absolute grump. <laughs> uh, some, someone had written something, who knows what. But Megan, she was kind of wonderful. She was such a pro. She sat bolt upright on her throne, smile permanently fixed to her face. She never dropped it for a moment. Absolute professional. Uh, it was kind of... Wow, and you know all of this, but at the time, you people, my God. Wow. Very interesting. But let's continue. This is brand new to me. I didn't expect to see all of this. Brilliant. And the contrast them so striking. So obviously he was in a bit of a mood on that tour. We were flying from Tonga back to Sydney. And often on these tours, there comes a point towards the end when the Royal might come back to the back of the plane and have a chat with us. Off the record, you know, not for printing, but it's a way of making bonds, it's a way of keeping us sweet, it's a way of having some informal contact. That's nice. Uh, and we were promised that he or they would come to the back of the plane and it didn't happen, it didn't happen. It's a four or five hour flight. When's this going to happen? And uh, then we were buckling up for the descent. And for the aborted hadn't. landing, lest uh, we forget. Yes. And we landed. And it hadn't happened. And only after we landed, they came back to the back of the plane. And Harry was slightly in front of Meg, was slightly behind him. And she didn't say much. She did make some strange remark about us wanting to get back for our Sunday lunch. <laughs> it was completely bizarre. But he is what he... Wow, completely bizarre. Being nice. So you guys could have something in your stomach. That was bizarre. Megan is always concerning about people's well-being. And then look how he brushed it. I mean, these people, those, those, those royal rats have been trained to get the worst of everything. But when people are being nice to them, they don't know how to take it. But let's continue. He said it was memorable. Oh. He said, thanks very much for coming, even though you weren't invited. Oh. And we thought, what? Was there an awkward silence? We were also yes. slightly looking sideways at us. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, because A, it was incredibly rude. Yeah. And B, it seemed it wasn't true because we very much were invited. And you know, a, a press release had gone out from the press office saying anyone who would like to come on this tour, what? please apply in the usual way. It was extraordinary. And a lot of people were very fronted by this. It was, really was rude. I think it was at that point sort of three weeks into a trip as well. So a lot of people had obviously left family at home and yeah. it was quite full on. They had such great press from that trip as well, yeah, right? Yeah. So I wonder what... And afterwards, afterwards, one of his senior aides conveyed the message to him that what he said had been rude. deemed to be rude and had gone down very, very badly. Particularly all of us who, as Emily says, we'd left families behind, we'd... Mm-mm-mm. Okay, so there's more. All right, 2 minutes and 38 seconds. Jonathan. Okay, Chuck also had to do the same thing when he gave an interview with Jonathan Dembley. Dembley. Dimbleby, mm. in which Charles confessed to adultery. He didn't say with whom. He did say something like he was asked with, he remained faithful, and he basically admitted no, but only after the marriage had irretrievably broken down. Mm. Afterwards, his press person did confirmed that he was referring to Mrs. Parker Bowles. So uh, I, I think I have that interview. The most damaging charge that is made in relation to your marriage is that you were, because of your relationship with Camilla Parker Bowles, from the beginning, persistently unfaithful to your wife and thus caused the breakdown. What is your, your response to that persistent uh, criticism. Uh, that's the persistent criticism, is it? Well, I... Uh, and the trouble is, you see, that these things, again, as I was saying earlier, are so personal. It's, 
it's difficult to know quite how to, you know, to talk about these things in, in front of everybody. And obviously, I don't think many people would want to. But I mean, all I can say is that the, the, there's been so much um, speculation feeding on every other kind of speculation that you know, it all becomes bigger and bigger. I mean, all I can say is um, that uh, I mean, there is no truth in 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 so much of this speculation. And uh, um, Mrs. Barker Bells is a great friend of mine. I have a large number of friends. I'm terribly lucky to have so many friends who I think are wonderful and uh, make the whole difference to my life, which would become intolerable otherwise. But anyway, let's continue. Cause a huge flurry that admission to adultery. And some time later, weeks, months later, Charles was at some dinner party with, I think, Richard Aylard, his private secretary, was also there. People, I think, at this dinner party were expressing the view that it was a mistake to have admitted adultery. And Charles pointed a sort of angry finger at Aylard and said, he made me do it. <laughs> oh. uh, that also sounds like my children sometimes. Literally, yeah. yeah. Whilst we're talking about Tonga... God took control of his mouth and says, you better say it, because the freaking narrative you guys lie so much truth doesn't exist so they got that they got that out of his mouth anyway let's continue uh, there was something that <coughs> happened in tonga i don't know if, if we ever knew or we'll ever know what happened when megan was at a market no, that was in fiji, we, oh, that was in fiji. Market. we do know we do, oh, we we do know what happened because i, re I, I revealed it oh my God, i'm so sorry I what even i know what, what happened, happened i mean let me tell you it's in his book okay tell me tell me so she was due to be at this market yeah. and these things are strictly timetabled you know you're there for 15 minutes 20 minutes whatever it is and basically halfway through she signaled to her staff she needed to get out so they got her out and it was very chaotic and I think quite significantly she left in a car without one of her senior aides I think it was a bit of a sign that the senior aide was in trouble and the press office afterwards came out with all sorts of reasons why this happened. They said it was security. And then they backed down from that and said it wasn't security. They basically changed their story. And it just kind of remained a bit of... Uh, keep in mind, okay, when Harry and Meghan were over there, all the threats they were getting, we, at least for me, I was not aware of it. And during those trip kind of thing, I don't think I was really into making podcasts or that deep into creating podcasts for them. But I was aware of what happened at the market. But when you're considering what we know now, security reason, all those nonsense that was going in the background, or was it after it really ramped up? Okay, you guys could correct me on this aspect. Was it after that main trip, because they went many places while she was pregnant, and the trip was very successful. But knowing what I know now, if this is what he's saying, that's what happened, you could, cons you could uh, understand why she would want to get out of there because with all these people, you do not know what might happen. And she was pregnant. And she was pregnant. All right. And also, the main reason I stopped is that uh, the palace had control of all what was being put out for them. Okay? All the... Uh, press conference and everything that was put out, the the palace had control of all of that. But let's continue. Of a mystery, there wasn't a coherent explanation, and then I found out years later the market event was to do with some UN women's organisation, yes. which Meghan had had some dealing before, and for some reason she didn't like this organisation and she didn't want to have anything to do with it. Ah. she didn't like the fact that all their branding was all over it. That is one of the main reasons why she pulled out of it. I mean, there may have been other factors, but I have seen a WhatsApp message <gasps> from one of the people who had responsibility for getting her out of the market. Yeah. And they sent an apologetic message to a close aide to uh, Megan the next day saying, sorry about the chaos yesterday. It was for various reasons, but mainly UN women. I've seen... Ah. Very interesting. I'm also doubting his statement on that one because they're always making up stuff. So if 
Harry and Meghan doesn't say it, I don't believe what he's saying, okay? He spoke about the engagement where Meghan left the market in Fiji, where he's suggesting that she told her assistant to cancel the engagement because there was a group there was a group there that she didn't want to be affiliated with. The press invented this, by the way. What in the name? I have no idea about this. I have no idea. But let's continue. <laughs> let's keep in mind, I don't know when these audios came out, but uh, they better be telling the truth because Megan and Harry are not under the control of the palace. I hope this is what he's saying is true. Okay, let's put the asterisk there because I, I'm not sure. I don't know. It was for various reasons, but mainly UN women. I've seen this message, so yeah. Oh. And but still so to this great. day, still to this day, I don't know what she had against them, why they'd fallen out, but... And why she realised so late that they were involved. She knew they were involved. Let's put allegedly, okay? Allegedly. We don't know for a fact. But I think she hoped or thought or believed that it wasn't going to be so obviously about them, that yeah. their branding wasn't going to be all over it. In the interest of balance, Harry and Meghan have talked about the so-called men in grey suits, haven't they? Yeah. And they've made very clear their discontent with the way they see the institution as having treated them. Do you think there's much merit in the claims? There's a lot to say here. One of the things I'd say is that it's important to realise that Harry was kind of unhappy before Meghan came along. Mm. So it's not just all about Meghan. And, you know... We learn a lot of this in spare. That, uh, that's a first coming from him. It's not all about Megan, but anyway. Yes. But we also knew it before, because I wrote about it in my book. I think it's very important to say, actually. Yeah. I think Megan yeah, gets he, so much flack. Yeah, I, <laughs> you see? No, really. I didn't even hear it. That's what I just said. I paused for this moment to say it's not... Uh, she, he finally says something. It's not all about Megan. But let's continue. It's important to say. And um, he was particularly aggrieved about the relationship with the media and that's one of the things he wanted to change the other thing is the, the men in grey suits they're the kind of visible face of the enemy mm. much more so than the actual individual members of the royal family so if things aren't going well if you're not liking the way things are run the manifestation of that is the courtiers mm -hmm. rather than the other royals because you don't have so much to do with them you don't actually speak to them so much but you're dealing with the men in grey suits all the time Megan, certainly those who worked for her, tell me that it's almost like she was setting up to fail. From what? the moment she first appeared, she was saying things like, you're not going to help me, I know how this works, I'm just the girlfriend, just before they got married. She was casting them in the role of people who wouldn't be helpful, wouldn't see things her way. She saw quite a what? few of those against her from the beginning. What? Okay, I do not know Megan personally. I doubt, very doubtful of that what he's saying right now there is no way i don't think megan would be that type to be talking to people like that very okay i truly don't believe this part 100 percent and my part but you guys could make your own judgment on this what megan talking like that no one place one area where the palace really failed i think was failing to realize there was a problem mm -hmm. early enough so, you know, it all reached a climax in December, January 2020, if I got the right year. Mm. Well, uh, I will go with Harry's version of that, but, well, when Harry said, uh, um, what was it, if he could do, I'm paraphrasing, if he could do something different, the only regret that he has, he didn't stop the, the nonsense that was going on on the tabloid earlier, okay? All these narratives that were being put about him and Megan, Megan in particular, okay? He didn't put a stop to it earlier on. He, he put a statement out regarding the racism that was being going on, but he wished he could have done it much sooner, and then it got carried away. I mean, w w I don't understand. Did they? Nah, Megan is not that type. Megan have been working with big companies before. The moment she walk over there, these people had issues. It's just that Meg, I could understand. You see how I say sometimes with the other one who let them mold. I'm talking about Kate, who allowed the institution to do whatever they want with her. 
They can't do that with Megan. So that was the problem, in my humble opinion. I wasn't there. I was in the in and out. I wasn't even making podcasts about Harry and Meghan at that time. I think during that time, I was probably just uh, watching um, one of those uh, YouTube channels about uh, Harry and Meghan with Hugo. I forgot his uh, channel. I think he, uh, a woman is, uh, uh, is have been um, taking care of the channel now before it was Hugo, a man. All right. So at that time, I wasn't even really creating content all right so i very doubtly think megan will be that what it whatever it is that he's saying the main problem i think is because they there was a narrative they create about megan even before she married into the royal family while she was dating harry they probably saw something different than harry that they said uh oh this might be the girl he's probably gonna marry Okay, so they create a narrative about her. So Megan did not allow them to m make her do certain things that uh, she didn't want to do. So that was the problem, in my humble opinion. They're desperately trying to control the narrative because they know that if they lose it, then the truth will come out. But anyway, I'm going to move it back slightly because I talk too much. Let's put it like right here. Failed, I think, was failing to realize there was a problem mm. early enough. Yeah. So, was... you know, it all reached a climax in December, January 2020, if I got the right year, mm. when they said they were going. And a lot of people have concentrated the debate on, you know, how the palace handled it, on what happened then. And I think that's a big mistake. I think it's actually the previous 12 months that are important. I'm not sure it would change the outcome. I think they probably still would have left anyway. But it changed the tone of the outcome. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that aspect, this is where the Syndrome and Harry's book come into play. Okay, they had wanted them. Okay, they create that narrative when they realize, this is another branch of things. They create a narrative about Megan when they realize Megan is not falling into that narrative that they want her to be. Okay, so they start crafting things to get her out of here. Okay. Where Megan got to the point where why are they, you know, somewhat bothering her that much when she's only doing what she was told, but to a certain extent. So they wanted her out of here in a different branch. This is where they divide the brothers and say they got to go or something like that. Create some nonsense to think that uh, Harry will be in need of the institution when in f and while they're pulling Megan away from Harry. Okay, so when Harry decided to leave, because that was Harry's decision. The decision that I have made for my wife and I to step back is not one I made lightly. It was so many months of talks after so many years of challenges. And I know I haven't always gotten it right, but as far as this goes, there really was no other option. And Megan was fine with it. Okay, Megan grew up on, you know, made herself a millionaire. Okay, with the help of her mother and her father and other people, she didn't do it all on her own, but she had the right training to be where she's at. And she's like, I don't need this. Okay, so she agreed with Harry and get the hell out of there. But the problem with the institution, the box that they were trying to put her in or the narrative that they were putting her in, she wasn't falling for it. All right, so they crafted their own uh, thing to get her out of there and this is why the Sendrian summit become very important because Heavy went there for like an hour or so they were discussing you know how they could work together and when Heavy said 50-50 they rejected everything when they already had their own you know the choices for Heavy they had the choice for Heavy began to address Granny about the five options Your Majesty you've seen the five options Yes, she said. We all had. They'd been emailed to us. Five different ways of proceeding. Option one was continuance of the status quo. Meg and I don't leave. Everyone tries to go back to normal. Option five was full severance. No royal role, no working for granny, and total loss of security. Option three was somewhere in between. A compromise, closest to what we'd originally proposed. I told everyone assembled that, above all, 
I was desperate to keep security. That was what worried me most, my family's physical safety. I wanted to prevent a repeat of history, another untimely death like the one that had rocked this family to its core 23 years earlier, and from which we were still trying to recover. I'd consulted with several palace veterans, people who knew the inner workings of the monarchy and its history, and they all said option three was best for all parties. Meg and I living elsewhere part of the year, continuing our work, retaining security, returning to Britain for charities, ceremonies, events. Sensible solution, these palace veterans said, and eminently doable. But the family, of course, pushed me to take option one. Barring that, they would only accept option five. We discussed the five options for nearly an hour. At last, the bee got up and went round the table, handing out a draft of a statement the palace would soon be releasing, announcing implementation of option five. Wait, I'm confused. You've already drafted a statement? Before any discussion? Announcing option five? In other words, the fix was in this whole time? This summit was just for show? No answer. And they said, no, either you in or you out. Harry was like, no, I have a family. I have to get the hell out of there. I can't, um, um, uh, if I cannot do 50-50, so I just have to go, which is exactly what the institution has already written for him. I, they choose that for Harry. Oh, my God, these people. But let's, I'm moving it back again. Then, and I think that's a big mistake. I think it's actually the previous 12 months that are important. I'm not sure it would change the outcome. I think they probably still would have left anyway. But it changed the tone of the outcome. Okay, mm -hmm. they would have left anyway because the institution wanted that. Remember, like I said, the St. Uh, meeting when Harry spent 45 minutes discussing how, they could, how he could work with the institution and after almost an hour, they had a, a statement already prepared which means the institution already knew what they wanted. They wanted them out of there. Mm -hmm. For the palace to start intervening then, sort of addressing what's wrong, why are you unhappy, how can we make things better, it still might have ended up with them. Asking all these questions because they don't want who's creating it. I'm saying the institution is really good at, you know, the psychology of things. They bother people in the brain to make you seem crazy. What you're seeing is not what it is. The same exact thing they did to Princess Diana. And then Harry, you know, like I said, they made the choice for Harry and he left. Okay, so the next one here. I think she probably didn't feel well because it was hot, crowded, and there could have been a stampede there if the crowd weren't control. He ended with uh, why they left and how the courts here were treating Megan too good. What the hell? All right, so let's listen. All might have ended up with them leaving, but it would have been an amicable divorce, mm -hmm. not the bitter and fractious one that we saw. Yeah. Having said all that, I mean, I think there are plenty of areas where... Harry and Meghan get it wrong. I think when they accuse the palace of briefing against them, I just don't think that happened. Yeah. It's not to say there weren't occasional Wait, 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 I pause. They, I think what? when they accuse the palace of briefing against them, I just don't think that happened. What? Then these, uh, how do you call this? Martin Brenning have said it. Much of the negativity towards the couple is coming from within the royal family. The royal family and staff of the royal family are the ones that are very often leaking these stories to the press. And other royal rats on the national television have said this. The press and the media. That's and true. as they say at the start That's of true. episode one, they say so many books and shows and stories have been written about us. We wanted to have our own say. And remember, the purpose of the PR office at the royal family mm. is to keep the royals in the press all the time. So you have to remember when I work in newsrooms, it's a fact that every anti Harry and Meghan story comes from Kensington yeah, Palace. But, but, So you have to remember, when I work in newsrooms, it's a fact that every anti-Harry and Meghan story comes from Kensington yeah, Palace. But, but and other royal rats on the national television have said this. Very happy to see both of his sons. I'm sure of that. And he may well want to forgive and forget. And, and we already know that he has left the door open. You know, 
open to Harry to come back. However, I don't think Wills or Kate or any of the other royals that he has slated as racist and much, much worse will want to have anything to do with him. I mean, I know my paper says it's a show of love that he's see. I know it's not a show of love. You know, he, Harry is a, he's a grown man now. He's nearly 40 years old. He knows that things can befall men of 75. And, and, and why has he waited until his dad has been diagnosed with cancer before he rushes across the notion to see him? It's been 17 months since he saw his dad. Last saw him at the coronation where he was but sullen. maybe that's we not... Don't, I'm sorry, no, no, you don't we wait until don't, your dad has cancer. No, we don't, don't know whether they've been speaking over well, we the don't telephone. Know, we don't know, well, no, we know because no, we some don't reporter know. has mentioned it. We don't know it. that they did speak on his birthday and Wills' no, people immediately leaked that phone call to the press. speak on his birthday and Wills' so, people immediately leak that phone call to the that's press. That's what the palace is saying. This is well, about, no, this, is a, this is a, this is a... And all of a sudden you, oh my God, this guy is full of it. But let's continue. Yeah. Which is not to say there weren't occasional leaks and some of the leaks might have been malicious, designed to undermine them, but it was occasional leaks. There's it that part really was not coherent strategy of briefing against them. You know, the number of times I rang up the palace and tried to get them to say something on, on a particular subject to do with them, and they just wouldn't say anything. They were not being briefed against, not on a sort of systematic basis. You know what, as I'm listening to him saying all of this, you know what I'm thinking? And I said, thank God, Harry had the foresight to do what he's doing. Right. It's not easy. What I'm talking about is the court, okay? Bringing legal action, you know, toward these people. We find out a lot of other things that uh, these people are undermining Harry, okay? Because these royal rights are on the same page with the institution. It's one of those where they don't, the, the firm, the royal family don't have to tell them, they already know the assignment, which branch to go. So you have all these people the royal rats, they have different branches of them. So many of them probably have multiple uh, Twitter accounts on many social media, okay, to spread this nonsense. Meanwhile, there's Harry and Meghan who's trying to do the right thing. They can get an ounce of somewhat reasonable of coverage. The one that does the reasonable coverage, they went after him as well. So... This is why those courts, the filing, all those things that Harry is doing, calling these people to court. Before, he used to call them an IPSO to review them, but IPSO is another branch as well who's already known the assignment. Just ignore Harry. So at th this point, I mean, God is good, and thank God Harry was on top of everything because before he married Megan in some shape or form, I believe, I wasn't following him that much, is that uh, he will call these people, you know, as IPSO, IPSO, I believe, to review those, you know, royal vats who's writing this nonsense. Okay, they keep on ignoring, ignoring him. So now, while he's married, okay, he said, F the IPSO. Now he's dealing with the court. Okay, even the review that uh, the result uh, for his security, Okay, he asked a judge to review it. So all of this are documented. We had enough of these people running their mouth nonstop, everywhere, on every platform, talking BS, misinformation about him and his family. When I mean his family, I'm talking the one he created with Megan. Okay, so now we have court documents to really put a stamp of what was really going on. Even though with the security review that he just had, he didn't, it didn't go his way. But the main thing is we get to see and what was being discussed. There were a lot of redacted information, uh, what was made public, but I read a good portion of it. That was the video that I did yesterday. Okay, Because these people, every chances that they get to at least make sense out of nonsense that were happening, they create more nonsense out of it. So all we need to do is just go to the court and see what was filing and then read what was there. Because these people will never tell the truth. All right, so let's continue. I've got to ask as well, that, you know what you're saying about how there wasn't a systematic telling the press certain things, but there was, 
like you said, some malicious leaks, like the fallout with Kate and Megan over mm-hmm. the Bower Girl dresses. Crying. And what is that all about? Because it's like, surely someone must have ticked off that that got leaked. And then that's, I don't know, I guess that's a basis for them to be annoyed, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's a very murky issue, that one, isn't it? I, yeah. I, I don't, interestingly, it took a little while for that story to come out. That was before the wedding. Until Megan went to Oprah and tell her side of the story because you guys run with it and nobody put the truth out there until she went to Oprah and explained the situation. This is why the Oprah interview had to be done. But you guys continue. That's the worst thing. You would have thought after the Oprah interview that would have stopped or even the copyright case that Megan brought. You would have thought that these people would stop, but they continue. Oh my God, but let's continue. I'm moving it back slightly. Uh, yeah. I don't, uh, interestingly, it took a little while for that story to come out. That was before the wedding, and it didn't come out till about November of that year, so some months. Yeah. yeah. And I think it got, got out through a pretty circuitous route. I don't know who told the Telegraph. It's the Telegraph who first wrote the story, but sure. uh, I don't know who told them. I really don't. And I know Kensington Palace was very reluctant to get involved in that story. Yeah. I mean, they, I questioned them many times. Because it, uh, it's favorable to them, so they didn't say anything. They never really said anything to protect Harry and Meghan. So when we're being told for the last six years, we can't put a statement out to protect you, but you do it for other members of the family, there becomes a point when silence is betrayal. But they will lie for the other one. Oh my Lord. I was about that. And- they wouldn't say anything. So, you know, I, I don't think it was a palace leak as such. And as for the, you know, there's some recollections may vary aspect, who made who cry. It's definitely difficult, isn't it, when you know that the people can't respond to your, I think that's kind of been an issue of them saying that. Well, I believe Megan, okay? There's no reason for her to lie about that. There's no reason, okay? Like I said, the court, I didn't say it in this video, but I'm saying it now. The court is open for everybody if the Kate believe as a matter of fact when I think about it Megan didn't really say anything bad about um, about Kate she even said Kate came and apologized to her and bought her flower but these people see it as I don't know Megan spoke positively about Kate but let's continue oh my god I'm already 35 minutes that side of the story, isn't it? Because it's like, well, there's not going to be a response to this apart from recollections may vary. Yeah, I use it on a regular basis. You know, yeah, that's an Instagram caption waiting to happen. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good one. I mean, we could talk about the sort of fallout of the Sussexes' departure all day. I think it's interesting what you say though about the fact that the royals don't deal with each other directly as often as they do. All right. Oh my. Oh, I don't know when this was recorded, but um. I'm surprised they're still talking about Harry and Meghan. Why don't they talk about West Kate? Depend on when this was recorded. All right, so <laughs> this is the one that brought me here because I didn't, um, that's the one that I bookmarked. And when I saw there was more, I was like, oh, this might be a video by itself because I'm already 30 something minutes. Okay, so this is it here. Will someone tell that dirty old pervert Arthur idiot to stop crying and demanding that Diana's second son apologize to his bullying brother and wicked witch stepmother, botox face sister-in-law, and no author, her third grandson, didn't need to be at the quarry. Okay, two minutes and 34 seconds. My view wasn't enough because there's a lot to be said in a half an hour, but not enough that, 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 that's gone on between them over the years. And after seeing his father, she's going to see his brother and, and, you know, and try to bury the hatchet or in some ways make some sort of where they can engage talking again because you know this is ridiculous he can't well you do not well we sort of have an idea if the person who was inflicting the pain onto harry don't recognize what he did what is the point for harry to go back to get the same treatment again if this guy William does not understand what he did. There's no reason for Harry to go back. Then you guys were uh, flunking when Harry went to meet his father when um, the cancer thing came out. Okay. Oh, he's. There were a whole bunch of headlines coming out as if, oh, he's not interested. He, meaning William, not interested in meeting Harry. So why are you forcing this? 
Heavy said he's already moved on. What the hell is wrong with these people? Because it's not him, that other guy, who's experiencing the pain that is being inflicted onto Harry. These, William in particular, should be very lucky. There's so many aspects, legal aspects, many branches of other things Harry could have done to William for inflicting that unnecessary pain onto him. But Harry decided to just ignore it. At some point, William is going to... Because the kind of reaction I think he's trying to get, he, meaning William, wants Harry to have. Harry is not giving him the reaction that William wants. So therefore, William keeps on being so freaking incandescent with rage. At some point, William is going to hurt himself. And don't blame Harry for that. You guys are pushing something that the others, the, the actual parties, don't want to get involved with. Each one of them moved their separate ways. Harry gave William the entire country to get the spotlight that William wants. Now that he should be front and center to shine where he is. He's doing stupid things. And then you guys all keep on covering for him. This guy will never learn. He will never learn if, you know, but let's continue. He pops in for an hour or two or a day, maybe two, when the Queen's uh, Jubilee was on, the, the Platinum Jubilee, and and then he pops in uh, for a day uh, for the coronation. Now, you know, coronation should have brought his son there for that, Archie. I mean, after all, Prince Charles was that age when he was at his mother's coronation. What in the... I swear, these people, there's a piece of their brain that is literally missing, and probably his entire brain is missing. What the F is he talking about? Doesn't he know the security aspect of things? What the F is wrong with these people? There was uh, one of those, uh, what was it? Someone mentioned and uh, corrected me on one of those videos. Harry went, what was it? Was it uh, Prince Philip? There was an uh, event. Or uh, maybe the veil, uh, the statue that uh, Harry went to reveal. And then he went to an uh, event. Could have been the well child. I'm not 100%. Okay. He had the police escort. And then after the event, the police were nowhere to be found. Harry had to defend for himself. Now, when that happened, when I was aware of it, and I was like, thank God. It happened when he was by himself. It was a good experience for him to see the danger of not having that security aspect. Why? So next time he knows not to bring his family. Because if he was with either Megan or Archie at that time, okay, when he's, uh, I don't know if Little Beth was uh, uh, born yet at that time, um, if he had to run, Okay, with his family intact and no security was nowhere to be found. Okay, he will have to think of about three other human beings to protect. So when he was by himself, in a way, I think God wanted to show him what is at risk. And he was by himself. So all he had to think about was himself to get to, six, to, get to safety. Okay. So this idiot sitting on national television, pretending none of these happened, none of these issues are existed. So for Harry to just flaunt his kid out there for these idiots to parade and abuse, say nonsense on Nash, on their tabloid and all of this. I mean, at this age, I'm sorry, you need to retire. Otherwise, you're waiting for karma. You freaking baggage for God. What the hell is wrong with this guy? I understand these people don't care about family values, but the kind of family values that they want, it's not what Harry wanted. What the F is wrong with them? But let's continue. Uh, let me move it back. I've talked too much. His son there for that, Archie. I mean, after all, Prince Charles was that age when he was at his mother's coronation, and it's a massive event, and... He should have done that, but he didn't. He just popped in, did it, and then went back the next day. Good. And I don't think you can just keep doing that and expect Scotland Yard to turn out, you know, ace, really top, mark, well, top policeman, you know, very highly trained policeman. Okay, so he, 
you guys can provide him what he need and he's willing to pay for it you guys said no so you're lucky he even showed up you're lucky he even showed up so what the hell is wrong with these people Okay, the taxpayers should be very happy that Heavy is not costing them a dime, even though Heavy wanted to pay it himself. But anyway. To just latch on to Harry when it suits ah. him, and I think you know the Home Office was right to reject his uh, appeal. So some would say, you know, he's made his bed, he has to sleep in it, he's no longer a working royal, Ravik has made the decision not to give him or that he doesn't need to have, you know, guarantees armed security but does this mean that we will see less of harry in the uk but not just harry we won't see him bringing archie and lilibet to see the king i mean the king and queen will, will, will want to see their grandchildren you know what if the if charles really really want to see the kids guess what this goes both ways he could fly to somewhere in california and then harry and megan could come and meet them at whatever hotel he's staying Okay, but in the UK, it's a big no. Because you guys are creating unnecessary things that don't need to be. But whatever, Harry and Meghan knows what's best for them. And then for me, as an outsider, I just keep on praying. Keep reminding God, this is the protection that he needs for his family. Harry needs God protection. But if Harry, now after this decision, doesn't feel it's safe to bring them, that's going to upset maybe the king a little bit. He wants to see his grandchildren. Listen, he's not only denying the king uh, uh, seeing his grandchildren, he's denying um, Archie and Lilibet from, from seeing their cousins, you know. It goes both ways. If the cousins wants to see, guess what? They could fly to the US. But look what happened when Harry went to see his father. Then he have police escort. What happened to that? If Charles really, really want to see his children, the same kind of protection when Harry went over there to see him, he could provide that. Okay? So stop pretending Charles cannot do, could not make things happen. So you want Harry to bring his family with the kind of threat he's getting. What the hell is wrong with you people? I'm telling you, evil original over there and his brain is completely missing. Um, George and Charlotte and, and Louis who, you know, first cousins and he doesn't know them and, you know, and, um, you know, I don't think Harry makes the final decision on them. But when, um, when Archie was born, then they asked William something about, uh, I forgot what was the question, but uh, when Archie was born and uh, the response he gave, he already have uh, some nephews. Okay, which was, I don't know, people's uh, kids or something like that. He didn't even recognize Archie. So what the hell? Why would Harry force? William has a freaking brick in front of him. Okay, that brick, he does not see Harry as whatever it is that's in his head. So Harry recognized that brick wall, so he's staying away from it. What the hell is this guy standing on national tel or sitting, shall I say, on national television talking this BS as if none of those issues existed? What is wrong with him? Wow, that's a senile kind of mentality that's talking right there. On that, you know, I, I suspect he's probably in discussions with his uh, with Megan, and I think they come to the thing that. You know, I don't think she's ever going to come here again. If she does, I don't know when that's likely. But um, certainly, look, those children are, you know, grandchildren of the king. And, you know, they should. And they've got royal titles now. One's a prince, one's a... And you know what? I'm not 100% sure about this as I'm recording this. Isn't, don't they say that uh, the, the monarch has uh, custody of the grandkids? So when those kids go toward the uh, Charles, okay, to see Charles, if Charles said the kid stays, what do you think those men in gray suit and all these people around are going to do? Huh? The kids are fine where they are, okay? Princess, and they should be more respectful and come and, you know, um, well, certainly Harry should bring them and, and to see the king uh, whenever he can, but, you know, so far he comes alone and uh, he goes quickly. Um, and I don't think, you know, he's... Okay, let me rewind this slightly. There was something I was thinking right here. 
Yes, listen. Prince, one's a princess, and they should be more respectful and come and, you know. Okay, now his sound here about the prince and princesses, as if this is a title, they pity them and they gave it to them. Isn't this part of the rules? The moment the grandfather becomes king, this is when the grandchildren becomes prince and princess. Okay? This is something that's in the book. It was automatic. The minute Charles become king, that title belongs to them. So it's not something they just give to them or therefore they should oblige by that freaking nonsense. But anyway, it's done. Let's go to the next one. All right, Lord, they so desperate to see Diana's fourth and sixth grandchildren. Well, it's not going to happen until security is secure. Not even that. The kids, while they are minor, they don't need to go over there because you cannot trust the words that come out of Prince, uh, uh, not Prince anymore, King Charles' mouth. Okay, the kids are not safe over there, not even with the family. And uh, the rule that they have over there, if the kids go over there, and uh, Charles said they stay. That's what's going to happen. How are they going to leave the country? They will have to sneak somewhere to the embassy of the U.S. to get out of there, maybe, which will be impossible. Okay? So the kids are fine where they are while they're minor. And uh, I think uh, Charles had many chances while the queen was alive to see the kids. They didn't even want to see the kids. So what the hell is this guy talking about? But anyway... That's it. A minute and 30 seconds. Does this mean that we will see less of Harry in the UK, but not just Harry? We won't see him no. bringing Archie and Lilibet to see the king. I mean, the king and queen will, will, will want to see their grandchildren, but if Harry now after this decision... <laughs> the king and queen. Who the hell is that queen? That three in a marriage? This is the last person who should see those kids. My goodness. Okay, it's repeating some of the things that was in that previous one, but let's continue. He doesn't feel it's safe to bring them. That's going to upset maybe the king a little bit. He wants to see his grandchildren. Listen, he's not only denying the king uh, uh, seeing his grandchildren, he's denying um, Archie and Lilibet from, from seeing their cousins, you know, um, George and Charlotte and, and Louis. <laughs> and, you know, when those kids get older, I think they will understand why. They cannot, uh, they didn't see those, uh, you know, the other side of the family. And the other thing as well, uh, what was that I was thinking? Um, they're making it seems like it's only the royal family that, that has feeling. Oh, it's going to upset the king. It's going to this. Is What about Harry who has been suffering throughout his years since his mother died? What about his feeling? Do you care about that? My goodness. But let's continue. Who, you know, first cousins, and he doesn't know them, and you know, and um, you know, I don't think Harry's makes the final decision on that. You know, I, I suspect he's probably in discussions with his uh, with Meghan, and I think they come to the thing that you know, I don't think she's ever going to come here again. If she does, I don't know when that's likely. But um, then, have you already said he's moved on? Okay, have you already said that? He's moved on because those people and the left behind worlds seems like they are in a different world. Okay, a different dimension. Harry is not in that dimension anymore. He sees for what they actually stand for. And this guy is in that freaking dimension as well. Certainly, look, those children are, you know, grandchildren of the king and, you know, they should... And they've got royal titles now. One's a prince, one's a princess. And they should be more respectful and come and, you know, um, well, certainly Harry should bring them and, and to see the king uh, whenever he can. But, you know, so far he comes alone and uh, he goes quickly. Um, and I don't think, you know, he's, well, he's, he's no longer a member of the royal family. He's made it his intention hmm? that he doesn't want to be. I don't know how what, long it's what, going what, on what, for. What, 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 I'm missing something here. He's no longer a member of the royal family? What the hell is he talking about? Harry is just... The only thing that changed for Harry, he's not a working royal. He's not working for the institution. A family is a family. This is the thing that Harry was... have been saying since a young man. To separate the working part with the family part. But these people mango everything when it comes to Harry. Chance my arm with a cheeky question. A bit like your mother, you are pursued every minute of every day by lots of people trying to take photographs, videoing, recording what you're saying, pushing. How can you possibly have a private life? 
Um, cheeky question. You're right. That is a cheeky question. But um, and to be honest with you, sadly, um, that that line between public and private life is 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 is, is almost. Uh, non-existent anymore and we, we will continue to do our best to ensure that, that, that there is the line you know we, we are completely aware that we're in a very privileged, privileged position and I will, I will spend the rest of my life uh, you know earning that, earning that privilege and trying to bring a spotlight onto things and causes that really really matter to me and I hopefully matter to a lot of other people as well um, everyone, is, everyone has a right, right to their privacy and you know, a lot of a lot of the members of the public uh, get it, but in sadly, in some areas, um, there is this this sort of incessant need to find out every little bit of detail about what goes on behind the scenes. It, it, it's it's unnecessary. You know, I hope that people get to see me here in this Invictus role. You know, cracking on with with, with, with the guys and and mucking in and having a having a good time with them. And this is you know this is this is uh, half my official role, but half my private role. This is this is what I enjoy doing, but. The private life has to has to be private, and I hope people respect that. Harry is still a member of the royal family. What the f is he talking about? Let me, oh my lord! I feel sorry for the UK if they keep on watching this nonsense. Comes alone, and uh, he goes quickly. Um, and I don't think you know he's well. He's he's no longer a member of the royal family. He's made it his intention that he doesn't want to be a working. I don't know how long it's going on for. I don't think how much more they can. How much we can badmouth the royals? After all, he's never allowed in. What? What the hell is he talking about? Okay, let's see here. Let's pause. LOL. Harry wasn't gonna reveal anymore. He's only revealed what happened to himself. The press has revealed via the king what's happening between the Sussexes. Facts. Okay, thirty-three seconds. Let's see here. Uh, Whistler. That he wasn't gonna reveal what was wrong with his father, and I thought, well, you know, it's the first time he's been discreet about that. And uh, and maybe he's changed his tune. Maybe his father warned him. You know, you tell no. Harry has always like that. He always talk about his side of the story. It's you guys who refuse to see for what it is. He spoke about what he went through, his experience. If you guys came on, when other people are involved and in his aspect depend on who the persons are, he doesn't mention their name. Look what happened with behind the pub. Okay, did he say who it was? No, but some woman come out and claim that was her as if this is a big thing, allegedly, if she is the one. Okay, now I find out that uh, they pay for people to talk, uh, to do interviews. So who knows, maybe that was a quick box for her. I don't know, allegedly. But Harry didn't say who he did it with behind the pub. Okay, when other people involved in his narrative, and his story, he leave those names out. The ones that he could literally pinpoint, he called them out. Guess what? If that's not true, that's the court. They could easily say, Harry defamed them in the, in, the, in the book. So how come they don't come out and go to the court and do the exact same thing that he's doing with the court system? These people are ridiculous. All right, so let's continue. What about this? That'd be the last time I speak to you. You know, maybe that was that. I don't know, but that conversation didn't last long. Half an hour, 20 minutes, half an hour. And then the prince was off, the, the king was off to Sandringham. And if there was a much feeling between them, Harry could have got on the helicopter and gone with him and spend a <laughs> weekend with them. With, with. Why would he go there? Why would he go there? And then the following day, or maybe a two later, two days later, and then we hear what happened with his uh, phone hacking case. Okay, who knows what could have happened at Sandrium with uh, Harry over there without the security, his own team. Please. With the king, but uh, he was, you know, he had to get uh, Whistler. Okay. That he wasn't going to reveal what was wrong with his father. And I thought, well, you okay. know. And then if he did, you guys will badmouth him again. Let me let you guys listen to this part without me interrupting. It's the first time he's been discreet about that. And, uh, and maybe he's changed his tune. Maybe his father warned him, you know, you tell about this. That would be the last time I speak to you. You know, maybe that was that. I don't know. But that conversation didn't last long. Half an hour, 20 minutes, half an hour. And then the prince was off. The, the king was off to Sandringham. And if there was a much feeling between them, Harry could have got on the helicopter and gone with him and spend a weekend with the, with, with the king. But uh, yes. he was, you know, he had to get in there. Whistler. Okay. Not only that, Harry had prior engagement. Remember, what was it? The Super Bowl? 
Harry had uh, to uh, give that award. So Harry is busy. All this is the royal family's fault, taking things away from him. Now they're forcing him to make, you know, get whatever gigs that he could get. Okay, if they pay him to come and give that award, guess what? That's a uh, money in the bank. But anyway, the other thing as well, what was that I was thinking? Um, the syndrome thing. Okay, I forgot. Let me read some of the comments here. Okay, but um, okay, so let's read everything. Okay, he says Harry and his children deserve no security. And he also says Harry and his children should come without security. Megan is their mother. It's coming out that Charles and Will were part of the group removing their security. So they made the choice. That's it. Okay, they really miss her. And the thing is that the kids, once they grow up, they don't have to take Harry and Megan's word for it anymore. They don't really have to listen to Harry's part of the discussion. Guess what? The court is there. They could see what their father, Lilibet and Archie, they could see what Harry did to make sure he, the kids get the security that they needed to protect them and then to bring the kids to the UK to see their father. Guess what? Harry doesn't have to tell the kids anything. I mean, he, he should, and I'm sure he will, okay? To back his words up, there's the court's document. Lilibet and Archie will read the court documents to see what their fathers did, okay? It's coming out that Charles and Will were part of the group removing their security, so they made the choice. Uh, they really miss Harry. The king has his pure white grandkids. Stay in that corner. You can take their home base and still want to see your grandkids. Uh, there's that part as well. Fragmore. Okay, firstly, Archie and Lilibet are not that queen's grandchildren. She is part responsible for the unsafe condition those babies find themselves in today. Not the queen. I will say, wait, let me see. Archie, firstly, Archie and Lilibet are not that queen's grandchildren. Okay, now I see, I see. Okay, I almost misunderstood this. Or not that queen's, that current queen, three in a marriage. They, they're not... Uh, What's his name? That twin of marriage grandkids. So she has nothing to do with them. So I understand that part. I almost misunderstood it. Okay. I could feel the tears in his voice when he said Megan will probably never come here again. <laughs> He's still crying. He needs to stop lying. Thanks for sharing, Henry. What about the royals bad mouthing Harry and his wife? There's all of that. Harry then go back the next day after the coronation. He he had footed it quick time to Heathrow with his coat hanger for his Dior suit on the same day within the hour after just chatting BS. Yeah. Okay, so let's go back. Was there any comments? Oh my God, this is one video by itself. I didn't know I had that. This was that long. Okay, so let's read that again. Harry needs to bring the king's grandchildren to see him. They also need to see their cousin. What is he not getting? The king put in place restriction so that he will see less of his own son and grandchildren. Okay, <laughs> let's not forget the spotlight. They thought that Harry was getting all the spotlight. <laughs> Harry left and left them with the spotlight, the BS spotlight from the royal vat. And they're still going after him. Okay, he doesn't need to apologize to anyone. Okay, I can't see that one. So I'm assuming that they're saying Harry needs to apologize. They invited them to Lily's first birthday party in Windsor and they declined. William and Kate took their children out of town with them. However, the rest of the cousin children attended the party. They also leaked to their tabloid buddies that they, they snub a one-year-old child. Okay, I forgot all about this. This squad are really good. Harry and Meghan did invite William, Kate, and their children to Little Beth's first birthday party at Fragmore Cardiff as an olive branch, but the Cambridges didn't attend. Source tells page 6. All right, so there's all of that. Little Beth didn't meet her cousin during her first trip to the UK for the Platinum Jubilee as Prince William and Kate Middleton snubbed the invitation to her first birthday party at Fragmore Cottage, a source has claimed. Said William is still wary around Prince Harry as he never quite knows what will be reported back after. Meanwhile, he's the one who's doing this nonsense. Harry and Meghan were said to have hosted a relaxed garden party for Little Bet at Fragmore Cottage. We saw those pictures. The Little Bet picture was taken by photographer and friend of couple, Miss and Harriman, who attended the picnic. All right, so there's that. Uh, what date did it have? Okay, um, 7 June 2022. At the time, page six reported that Harry and Meghan had invited the entire Cambridge family to Little Bet's birthday party as an olive branch but that will and kate more or less snubbed the invite and made other plans instead okay so there's all of that
Gabe went, Harry and Megan, Marco holds first birthday party for a little bit. No senior royals went. Okay, so it's not Harry and Megan's fault. William and Kate, meanwhile, made it imply clear they were not attending Little Bet's first birthday party and nor were their children by the simple impedient, expedient of making a high-profile public appearance hundreds of miles away in Cardiff with George and Charlotte Saturday. Okay, so it's all documented, uh, but we saw the, the pictures. Okay, the king threw them out of Fragmore Cottage, their safe housing in the UK. If King Charles the Cruel wants to see his grandchildren, the answer is in his hand. Or he, he can get on a plane and fly to California. That's what I'm saying. Okay, so there's all of that. What is that? I'll just, I'm going to click on that just to see. Oh, uh, it's smaller. Okay, I don't want to go too much into that. I did a video. Wow. Okay, let me get, hop out of there. Oh, it has the thing with Fragmore here. Let's see here. You see, Fragmore is slightly different. This is after they met uh, the queen and they had their little picnic. Um, yeah, look at it. They really did make this a little cozy place. It wasn't that high profile thing, but they made it their own. Okay, with Megan's money. Okay, remember the all the crying the royal rats were doing about Fragmore renovation and Harry and Megan pay back. Okay, that's their money right there. And then the king took it back. I'm telling you, baggage for God. Okay, after, okay, perfect, after this, they know they are gaslighting as usual, they are trying to rewrite what actually happened, erase their complicity, and put the blame on Prince Harry and Meghan, they will not succeed, this is a new era, okay, let me read this too and then go to the next tweet, those old bones understand how empires are maintained after the brutality of the takeover where it's done by gaslighting and maintaining false narrative, this is what I was saying when I was listening to the podcast that I was just sharing. Okay, they have all these people to spread this BS and then they're blaming everything on Harry. My goodness. And this is why Harry had to go to court to refute every nonsense that they say. Literally had some derangers say Harry was a traitor to his country. Revisionist history right there. I'm telling you, I don't know why they, they keep on saying that. The traitors are really the royal family. The left behind royals who's taking bag of cash from people they don't even know for why. Okay. And then deprive. This is the part here. This is the part that many UK needs to understand. Harry and Meghan were literally doing exactly, exactly why the institution was in existence. To help charities. Meghan was there for a few seconds. I literally call this a few seconds. Okay, she created the cookbook. There is a cookbook, but it's also the story of a West London community who gathered together in a kitchen and discovered the healing power of sharing food. It's like one family now, we are sharing food, sharing happiness, sadness, everything. I think food can bring back memories, and even the smell of food can bring back childhood comfort. I immediately felt connected to this community kitchen. Like these women, I'm passionate about food and cooking as a way of strengthening communities. She asked me, how many days do you offer this service? And I said, two days a week. And her straight question was, why not seven days a hero? And I said, funding. So she goes, we can do a cookbook. She did the, uh, was it small work? Hi everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, it's very exciting and it looks beautiful and I'm sorry if you were waiting for a bit in this sunshine though it's pretty nice to have such good weather. So I thought that it would probably be helpful for you to understand how we ended up here today and why this collection was so important to conceive based on the visits and what I was seeing when I was on site at SmartWorks. And let's maybe go back a little bit. Should I hold for sound? <laughs> They're grateful. <laughs> um, when I first moved to the UK it was incredibly important to me personally to be able to connect with people on the ground doing really important work 
And one of the places that I went to very early on was SmartWorks. Now, funny enough, and purely by coincidence, it was just a year ago at the same time that I was working on a project in Grenfell with this woman at a community center. And the, she helped with many other charities with the, what is it, um, what is it, the, the, the dog charity that she no longer a patron, but she still talked to them and gave money to, uh, do a wing for one of the person who introduced her to that uh what's the name of that charity oh my god i should be ashamed of myself because i did a video on it on our part of your service okay so they heavy and megan were actually doing exactly what was required of them for getting the money the taxpayers money even though knowing very full well heavy and megan were not getting paid they were taking care of themselves while they were over there okay this is the trade report here from the royal family they kick heavy and megan out literally they did because when harry was still fighting to do the half in with them at the syndrome meeting the paper was already set the statement that they were gonna make public was already set what they put on the paper was that harry was gone began to address granny about the five options your Majesty, you've seen the five options? Yes, she said. We all had. They'd been emailed to us. Five different ways of proceeding. Barring that, they would only accept option five. We discussed the five options for nearly an hour. At last, the bee got up and went round the table, handing out a draft of a statement the palace would soon be releasing, announcing implementation of option five. Wait, I'm confused. You've already drafted a statement? Before any discussion? Announcing option five? In other words, the fix was in this whole time? This summit was just for show? No answer. Okay. So this is... William really is the traitor to the UK. Because Heavy and Megan were doing the work. Look at this. This is another branch as well. There's the king who's sick now. Where is William, you know, standing up, move forward... And do the work what is he doing now and every time he goes to a charity he goes empty-handed i'm sorry we can only come and give words and comfort but we're we are thinking about you the whole time and we really care about what's going on so sometimes it's just more than financial yeah. well if we can give you a little smile here and there that's important so you know who is the trader here I don't know that the blindfold that the UK has or the nonsense that the royal rats are putting in their head, they got the wrong trader. Okay. Um, all right. Let's finish that. Okay. I think this is going to be a video by itself. Yeah. I'm an hour now. Literally had some derangers say Heavy was a trader to his country. Revisionist history right there. We have a trader here in the US. I, we have plenty of them in the US. Plenty. Okay. And they're holding very high office. Okay, I know what one looks like. It's not Harry. Okay, um, that is that. Let me see. I, I didn't expect this. Can you imagine this? This is the only thing that I did here in this video. And I'm already an hour. Let's see what this is about. This one here. Or maybe I'll start the next video on that. I'm already an hour. Okay. You know what? Let's squeeze as many and then new video, hilarious, GB news. Okay, I'm going to put this. This will be the last one for this video and then do another one. Part two. Who needs enemy with a brother like Prince William and a father like King Charles? William forced Prince Harry out of the UK. Thank you. Charles removed Harry's security, took away Fragmore, the UK home Queen Elizabeth II gave Harry as a gift to try to punish and bring Harry to here. And their liege men sit on Ravik. Okay. So there's all of that as well. I'm 100% Sussex squad, but I don't understand the security thing. Does he need a different type of security in Great Britain? Yes, because there have been so many threats. High level. Okay, it's not just a mini thing. You know, people calling not my king. No, not that type. High level. High level. Okay, and then you have the family who's plotting against him. This is another thing as well. This is why Harry needs that. And then Harry is not just anybody. Okay. I read part, not all, part of what was being um, 
happened with the security review. Okay. They redacted so many information because it's high level things. So this is why heavy really needs it. There's a lot of people, even police. <laughs> this is a gift in disguise, no matter how you take it. But um, it's a gift in disguise because even the police, you cannot even trust. Because whatever, you know, the royal family says, it seems like everybody around them remove their brain and then say, control me, control my body. I don't understand this. But let's continue. So this person is saying she doesn't understand the security aspect. Okay. Can his security from U.S. not be used in England? Of course, none of this should have happened. His family is cool. Okay. Heavy could still bring his security. Wherever, we've seen pictures of him and the security. I don't know if I have that picture, but the one that I'm thinking, I believe it was after he met with his father, the security he brought with him was behind him. Okay. So yes, he could still bring his security, but the police protection, if there was a extreme threat to him so those police officers in the uk could be there to do what needs to be done because the police that um the security that he brings with him cannot carry weapons over there okay so let's continue he is asking for real-time threat assessment to be provided to his security team that's another branch as well and since his team can carry guns that's the other part here in the uk to pay uk police like many high profile citizens in the uk are able uh, get in their uh, public funded police protection especially those who serve in government and PYTE, I have a video where i explain what the is it five eyes are where they get the uh, high level intelligence Okay, from US, UK, Australia, Canada. Okay, so these are some group who, if they know something, they could pass this information to, to the UK and then they could adjust their maneuver and things like that. So this is the part that uh, Harry is asking about. On PYTE, I have a video. Girls, I don't know. It's about security. That was back in either 2022 or 2023. Not 23, because 23, the channel was demonetized, so I wasn't putting that much. So it has to be 2022. Okay, so let me read that again. He is asking for real-time threat assessment to be provided to his security team. And since his team can carry guns in the UK, to pay UK police like many high-profile citizens in the UK are able able get in there. There's a uh, public funded police protection, especially those who serve in government. Okay. And Harry was asking to pay for his own. Oh, okay. That seemed reasonable. And they won't even let him pay for it. That's just out of spite of this point. Okay. There's that. Uh, they took away Fragmore and gave them a residence inside Buckingham Palace instead. The king did that to make sure Meghan could not claim the property following their inevitable divorce. You know what? baggage for God. I don't think Megan wants anything to do with these people. I'll go into that. There's four comments under it. Dirty duo. Okay. This guy is and will always be forever a loser. Instead of using his time, his energy, his money to be someone useful, he uses uh, this to destroy his brother and his family. May the evil come back to him even stronger. Okay. Not even the tears, the pain, the distress of a mother or the implication that she was murdered could influence her son. Heir to the throne to modify the monarchy and influence a better outcome from the evil that plagued his mother. He now becomes the same evil that tormented her yep mm -hmm. william and kate sent jason canoff to testify against megan and her case against the daily mail william sent simon case to draft the final option stripping harry of his security then call him pretending to be sympathetic okay so there's that part as well this is why the court the review had to be done so we know all of this because if Harry comes out and say all of this they're gonna undermine his uh, thing so Harry's taking the long path Okay, these were um, released in court. Okay, the review for his security. William drove Harry's house and physically assaulted him. That's the dog bowl thing here. That's an ad. Okay, it makes sense now why Prince Harry feel the need to see it too about security for his own family. When or lose, he will have a record of people who worked for royal family and also sat on the government Ravik security panel and also helped stop his own family security in the UK. That's it. This is pretty much it. This is the summary why Harry is doing what he's doing. 
100% agree. To dim their lights and put them in their place, but they were to purpose uh, to study and understand their target. They miscalculated and now look at them. A joke on an international scale, no star power side chick, a rumor princess in a dungeon, and a drunken swing prince. Yeah, that's another branch too. All right, that's not his brother. That's just some jealous and lazy man child that Harry was unfortunate to be in the same space. And from time to time, his brother will actually act like a brother and be supportive, not a whiny hypocrite that can hold up on his own. Egg is adopted. <clears throat> Gay, you were adopted. Gay, I'm so glad Harry took his family and left. They will never be safe in the UK ever. Charles and William thought they could break Harry. Thought he had no strength of work ethic. They were so wrong. So glad they left. <laughs> I mean, with the work ethic, I don't know what these people were thinking. Then they know what they did. Okay, let's see this one here. They took away Fragmore and gave them a residence in Buckingham Palace. Okay, instead. So let's see here. Okay, ma'am, Fragmore Cottage is a Crown Estate property. Harry and Meghan were gifted the use of the property by Queen Elizabeth through a lease. So they pay market rate, rent, refurbishment costs, and fixture upgrade. Shaw's pertinently rescinded their lease. Stay away from shop object. Okay, Buckingham Palace is a Crown Estate property as well. They've been offered that instead. The lease for Fragmore was far from market rent, more like ground rent. What was it? <laughs> You know what? Let me just leave it alone because these people. Mm. Okay, when Megan divorced Trevor, who cheated on her with her childhood best friend. Okay, I'm not gonna repeat the name. While she was filming suit in Toronto, she left him their house as settlement so that he has no claim on her future finances. So I doubt she will claim a servant cottage. Thank you. All right, this is better than me. This is better than what I was thinking. Thank God I didn't even say to give myself work to erase it. Okay, and then I have a divorce. That's a bit presumptive, isn't it? Heavy is not going anywhere. All right, so this, I think I'm going to put it in PYTE because a little bit more. I don't know where I'm going to put it when I'm editing. All right, let's do a prayer for Harry. Um, Let's say prayer for family value. The one who have family uh, value. Prayer for family value. Gracious God, help us to love each other fervently. Grow our love so deep that it is able and willing to overcome and forgive a multitude of misgiving. Inspire a spirit of hospitality in each of us and enable us to cheerfully share our home. We acknowledge that you have given each of us spiritual gifts. Okay, so this is for the ones who consider family as family values. Okay, so that's it. Please take a moment to subscribe, like, and share. If you want to support this channel, there's a PayPal link and a Cash App link in the description. You could donate. Those who have donated, thank you. All right, I switched to this channel just in case I decided this is where I'm going to put it. All right, so that's it. Now, that was supposed to be one video, and I decided to, I went on with that. So this will be in the next video. Let's see what this is about. Okay, I don't know where I'm going to put that. Let's go to that. What is this about? Okay, so that will be definitely on RPU Team Sussex. Okay, so that's it. Thank you for watching. privilege to be with all of you today.
know, we want we ask for forgiveness and uh, and please come back. for the better.